Hello, and you're very welcome to this session for the Digital Support Services T-Level and preparing for the Network Cabling Occupational Specialism Assignments. And the plan for this session is to just begin with some quick introductions, and then we will have a high level overview of the assessment. After that, though, we will look at each assignment in much more detail. Just some uh, quick introductions. My name is David Kiernan, and I work in the provider development team at NCFE. And our job, our purpose is to support providers with the delivery of our qualifications, understanding the structure, the assessments, anything re and anything related to teaching and learning. As my own background is also teaching. And my direct email is shown, but if I'm unavailable, then please do use our general provider development email address. And I'm also joined today by our subject specialist, David Seddon, and I'll let him introduce himself now. Thanks, David. Um, yeah, hi everybody and welcome to the session. Um, just before we get started, just a bit about me and my background. Um, I've been with NCFE now for getting on for about 18 months. Um, prior to this, same as David, I've got a teaching background as well. Um, I worked in um, further education college for around about the last 20 to 25 years. And through the time there, I've worked with delivering and managing computer science programs. That's in both further and higher education, as well as digital apprenticeships. And as far as T levels are concerned, I've been working with those since the, they started early development. Thanks, David. Cheers, thank you very much for that, David. And just one final thing to note as well, is that while we are discussing the assessments and preparing for them today, uh, neither myself nor David Seddon have actually been involved with the assessments or their development because we cannot be part of the assessment team as this would be a conflict of interest since we speak directly and support providers like yourself. We're going to look at an overview of the assessment now, including marking and grading information. As I'd imagine most of you are in year two of delivery right now, I'm sure you're familiar with the QualHub page for the Digital Support Services T-Level. But there is one resource on there which could be easy to miss. In the Support tab, along with our sample occupational specialism assignments, we have got exemplification materials. And these show a pass and distinction example of work for those sample assignments. And they also contain comments by the examiners, highlighting the positives and areas for development. Another key area I want to highlight is the resource requirements section in the specification. And this states the resources you'll need to deliver the core component and the occupational specialism component. And for the live assessments, a provider guide will be given. And this lists the specific resources needed for each assignment, but should remain relatively similar to the sample version on QualHub. The network cabling assignments will assess the three performance outcomes from your content delivery. As this is a synoptic assessment, you need to ensure your delivery is completed before the assessment dates. The weighting of each of the performance outcomes to the assignment is shown on screen, and there's a larger weighting of 52% given to performance outcome two regarding installing and testing cables, as that's a highly important aspect when working in a network cabling role. If you have previously attended or watched our webinar on planning your year two delivery, you'll have seen a year two sample plan similar to this. But just focusing in on year two, and as mentioned previously, you'll need to have completed delivery before the assessment. And by the end of February or beginning of March might be a good target to ensure sufficient time for revision and practice of the assignments. Of course, that's dependent on your delivery model, the number of hours you'll have with students, any block placements that might be planned. The deadline for registering students onto the assessment is the 30th of March, and it's best to do that soon if you haven't done so already to ensure you don't get any late fees. And the first assignment begins from the 17th of April, 
and providers will be given information in advance for planning and preparation purposes, such as for assignment three, which occurs on the 5th of May, but information will be given to providers on the 17th of April. As for the assignments themselves, the delivery is similar to the employer set project, where assignments are completed under supervised conditions. Students can only have access to the assessment materials during those supervised sessions, and evidence will be submitted to NCFE for American. The students will take on a network cabling role and complete various tasks. And these have been designed to be as occupationally realistic as possible with input from educators, employers and industry experts. We'll look in depth at each assignment, but this table contains a summary of what to generally expect each year, each year. And I do say generally, as we do have reviews and take account of provider feedback too. Also, the upcoming series will have some amends published to the key date schedule to account for the King's coronation and resulting bank holiday on the 8th of May. So do check the key date schedule for that. Currently though, the first assignment will generally be conducted in the first week on days set by NCFE, which will be around mid-April each year. And this task or this assignment is involving network design. Assignment two, takes place during a two week window in provider scheduled sessions where students need to install a cabling system. And this assignment alone contributes 40% to the overall occupational assessment. And as the skills and knowledge demonstrated within that assignment are really considered essential when working in a network cabling role. And that's why it's given a higher weighting. And then we have the final assignment which requires students to troubleshoot cables and a network and also perform a risk assessment. And this is conducted during the fourth week on days set by NCFE. So in total, the assignments will be delivered over a four week period. And as mentioned, there are changes planned uh, to the assessment schedule for the King's coronation. So do make sure you look out for those updates. Now this table shows the intended weighting of each assignment and the number of marks available. And you can see there is a problem here as a task weighting, or the assignment weighting, and the actual marks available, that weighting, they're not the same. And it's not always possible or practical to increase the number of marks available. Otherwise it can become overly prescriptive and the assessment wouldn't be as valid or reliable. So instead, a scaling factor is used. And this is a number that when that will be multiplied by the raw marks achieved in order to make what's called a scaled mark. Now these are the scaling factors for the different assignments. And by applying this to the raw marks, we can now have the weightings actually aligned. So with assignment one, the raw marks available is 60, but whatever marks achieved is multiplied by the scaling factor, in this case 1.017. And so 60 marks in scaled is actually 61. And so on for the other assignments with their relative scaling factors. So let's uh, look at this in use when it comes to grade boundaries and your students. Now the occupational specialism assessment is graded as past merit and distinction and the upcoming series will be the first sitting of the assignment so there aren't any past grade boundaries so the table on this slide is purely an example illustrative purposes and not based on any data now the marks for each assignment are aggregated into a final mark using that linear aggregation mechanism in which the scale marks are combined to determine the overall scale mark needed to achieve the grade. And it's probably easier to, to see this with some example student marks. So on this table shows the marks achieved in the three assignments by three students. So for every student, 
their raw mark is multiplied by the scaling factor to produce their scaled mark. And for each student, we keep their scaled mark for each assignment to three decimal places. Each scale mark is then combined and then rounded to the nearest whole number. So for student A, we can see that they got 159 scaled marks, as opposed to their total raw mark of 130. And it's this scaled mark that's compared to the scaled grade boundaries to determine the student's overall grade. When all the assessment components have been completed, you'll be able to use the grading matrix that's found within the specification. The overall weighting is a 50-50 split between the core component grade and the occupational specialism grade. So let's say a student got a B in the core component and a merit for the occupational specialism. Then the final grade for the technical qualification would be a merit, assuming they've completed all the components such as industry placement as well. Now students can resit the occupational specialism assignments as well, and it is the best grade that counts. And while there isn't a limit on the number of resits students can take, there is a time limit. They have got up to two years after completing the T-level for resits, so which would mean a maximum of two further attempts available. And the reset would be all assignments as well. It's not possible to do individual assignments just due to that linear nature of the assessment. And the last thing I want to highlight is regarding the results your students achieve. And if you have questions regarding the grades, there are options available to you, which are available on this dedicated web page. Now, some of them do have timeframes for reporting or submitting various requests following the results being released. So it's worth being aware of these options now to ensure you don't miss any of those deadlines. We'll look at each assignment now in a little bit more depth, beginning with assignment one, where students will need to produce a proposal for a network installation, which includes a network diagram. The first assignment is conducted over three days, which are on dates and times set by NCFE. And there are two tasks for students to complete, with the first task being a network proposal that meets the needs of the brief. And this task is conducted over two days, with AM and PM sessions on both days, with each session lasting two hours. In the second task, students will need to use Packet Tracer to create a network diagram. And this task is conducted on the third day with a morning and afternoon session, which each lasts two and a half hours. For task one, students will always need to produce a network design specification. And the content of this task will be the same every year, with just scenario specific references changing, such as the organization like the surgery in the sample assessment material. And therefore the evidence produced will still be unique every single year. So because this task won't change, you'll be better able to prepare student for what to include on the proposal. And this should include the physical layout for the network with trunking, cable management, separation from power, etc. And NCFE will provide a floor plan with this assignment. Cable information, such as the type of cable chosen, the amount required, showing how that value was determined as well. Um, data information, including types of data to be transmitted, storage, method of transmission, such as wired or wireless, and other network details, such as hardware requirements, accessibility, and security. Students will need a computer, but internet access isn't permitted for this task. And they'll need to produce a text document for their proposal. And they'll also need some suitable drawing or diagramming tools so that they can add their cable layout to the floor plan. 
So here's an overview of the two pieces of evidence that students produce and what they need to consider when producing it. In both cases though, students will need to justify their choices and decisions made. So always thinking why? Why that cable type? Why have they run the cable in the direction they have? Why those data security measures? Why that method for data storage, etc. As for the mark scheme itself, the work produced is assessing all three of the performance outcomes. And what I've tried to do here is to summarize the key aspects of the mark scheme, but do have a look at the full marking descriptors in the sample mark scheme. For pre uh, performance outcome one, students uh, are marked on the quality of the information for the data types being transmitted, data storage, and security measures to ensure uh, integrity and accessibility. Performance outcome two is evidence of their uh, network resources and component consideration, principles of transmission, and linking together what the signal types and cable resourcing might mean for the network. And performance outcome three is really about those justifications and showing critical thinking when considering the network. In order to prepare students for this task, the use of writing frames or templates for practice can be uh, quite powerful, especially since the content of this task won't change. It'll just be scenario specific changes. And in order to ensure students are making it relevant to the brief, uh, having a brief introduction where they state the organization type and the requirements could help to focus them in on those requirements more when actually completing the proposal. And as students will need to consider layouts, getting them used to different floor plans is also useful. And you can have students des design their own plans for each other to try out. And there is also an example of a floor plan with uh, within with cabling on it in the digital infrastructure occupational specialism assignment one. So this could actually be adapted for use with your students as well. Or get even students to annotate maybe that floor plan with why they think the cabling was placed where it was. And this can help to develop their critical thinking, which is necessary for those performance outcome three marks. I'm now going to hand over to David Seddon who's got some further advice. Thanks, David. Um, yeah, I suppose for me, the key thing with this is, you know, the more practical experience the students have got, the more it will support when they come to do the network design specifications. They, they should be able to show the physical layout of the network and they should be able to put forward proposals for things like the trunking, the cable management, separation for power and things like that. Um, from the scenario, can they pick out how many users the network needs to support and explain how many it will support? Um, think about what type of data will be trans transmitted across the network and how data is stored. Um, they've obviously got to have a good understanding of the hardware that would be required for it. And that could be a wired or it could be wireless again, depending on what the scenario is asking for. Um, and they should be able to think about any security measures. They need to know a range of security measures, how they'd implement it, but also justify what they're implementing and why they're implementing it. Remember, it's that what and why, because th that gives them that rationale. They've got to be able to talk about the cable in the choosing. Um, from that, they've got to be able to say why they're choosing it. You know, in some instances, it might not be that there's a direct right and wrong answer. The justification is the thing that makes it right. If they can say why they've picked something and it's right because of this, then that's one of the key things that the examiners will look for. Do, can they add that technicality to it and explain what they're talking about? Um, and they'll probably get some form of dimensions for the building. So I would expect that they'd have to be able to calculate the amount of cable they're going to need. And the assignment brief will probably say, when you're calculating this, add 5%, 10%, something like that, onto the amount of cabling you're using. So again, it's making sure that they're showing how they've, how they've worked out how much cabling they want and have they read through the assignment and then applied any additionality as that's looking at. 
it's always relating it back to that scenario. So the more they can get in the habit of looking back to the brief and making sure what they're putting in matches that requirements, that's what the examiner will look for a lot of the time. Thanks, David. Excellent. Thank you very much, David, for that. Task two is the production of a network diagram to meet the needs of the brief. And students will use Packet Tracer to produce this diagram. Now, as internet access isn't allowed for this task, Packet Tracer won't be accessible online. So do ensure you have a locally installed copy. Now, coupled with the uh, network diagram is a document with annotated screenshots, which identifies the resources needed, how components are connected and work together, and the IP addressing and security measures. So task two assesses performance outcomes one and two, with performance outcome one looking for evidence of how they intend to make things secure and why that should work. For performance outcome two, it's ensuring the network diagram has all the correct elements and the resourcing is linked to the scenario and brief requirements. And security has also been considered. And finally, it's the student's understanding of the data transmission and the cables used. So getting students uh, ready for this task, the best thing is practice with Packet Tracer. And you have the students involved with this as well to save yourself uh, some time and work too. So for example, have students come up with their own network requirements and they actually produce a network diagram for it. Then students swap the requirements that they came up with and see what network diagram their peers actually produce and then compare it to their original that they had envisioned and leading on to a discussion. And then another thing that can be done is producing presentations or leaflets maybe regarding the principles of transmission and ensuring that security is incorporated too, such as tampering and signal loss. And I'm going to hand over again to David Seddon with some uh, further suggestions. Thanks, David. Um, yeah, for this, one of the best recommendations was probably be the use of Packet Tracer. It's not something that's required, but it's a good way of getting students familiar with everything they'll need. Uh, for the assignment, it'll ask for network di diagrams. So Packet Tracer might be used for that type of thing, more for creating the diagram than looking at how the devices have been configured. Remember, it's not testing the can they do Cisco based equipment? So it's not manually going in and configuring the routers, but using it to create the diagram up, but then being able to explain everything that they're doing on screen at the same time. So if you're using Packet Tracer, getting students in the habit of using text boxes to label everything that they're putting on the screen. So if they're using devices, connections are putting on the cable they're using, the IP address range in the doing, any subnetting they're putting in, security measures, put notes in for all of it so that they can explain what they're doing. And when the examiner looks at it, because if, you, if you're using Packet Tracer, you'll be submitting it as a PDF. And for that reason, having everything on there means it's well annotated. So they should be able to talk through the network diagram, explain everything, what everything is, why they've implemented it. Um, and there's plenty of free resources available that will help with it if you're using Packet Tracer. I've put two links on the board, obviously Packet Tracer for downloading it. And Open, uh, Open University have got the uh, online version of Packet Tracer, which is ideal for if you've got students who are using iPads and things like that. They won't be able to install Packet Tracer as such, but they'll be able to use the online version so it's a nice tool for working with that it's a bit more limited than the full version but at least it'll give them um, some of the tools that they can work with for diagramming uh, as i said there's loads of resources out there and the more familiar students are with the software uh, the better it is because it, it's needed for that assessment three you know you could give them activities where they've got to solve problems 
Uh, it could be cables have been put in the wrong port, wrong IP addresses, servers not powered on, static IP addresses used instead of DHCP. You could have wrong device names on. So as they're going through it, they're getting used to that troubleshooting all the time. And if you've got the opportunity, and I suppose if you've got the time as well, um, if you've not already looked at it, have a look at developing some packet tracer activities. It does take a bit to get going with them, um, but once you've got going with them, they make really good activities for students because they become self-marking, so they can use them as homework-based tasks. You can then set it up so you can allocate the marks based on the things you want them to do. So once they've given the right IP address, they get a mark for it. Once they've named a device the way you want it, they get a mark for it, etc. Uh, and that way, because it's self-marking, you can then put in the feedback you want as required. Um, and it makes it a great resource that you can use year in, year out once you've done it. Um, or if you want to be a bit more adventurous, get the students creating these as they go through it and the students themselves can build up um, a resource deck of uh, packet tracer activities and if you've never created them before there's plenty of tutorials on youtube that will take you through how you do it um, what i have found is looking through it and even if you use the cisco site a lot of the a lot of the resources that are out there tend to be for an older version of packet tracer having said that the techniques they do they go through to put it together and how it works is virtually the same so even if you're watching a video taking you through it using the old version of the software you'll find you can easily adapt it across to uh, the current version we're on uh, the only other thing i'd say is if you're going to be putting instructions in it as well you do have to put the instructions in using html and if you're not familiar with HTML or you don't really want to be spending time loads of writing it, again, if you go online, you can find there's plenty of HTML online editors where you can just copy the text in and it'll write the HTML code for you. And you can quite easily copy it and paste into your packet tracer activity. Um, quite easy to work with. Thanks, David. Excellent. Thank you very much, David, for those uh, useful tips and uh, links as well. On to assignment two now, which consists of two practical tasks regarding making, installing and testing cables. Assignment two is conducted over a two week window in provider scheduled sessions, but there are some conditions that these sessions must adhere to. So students need to complete uh, this over three consecutive days. And this will consist of six sessions lasting 12 and a half hours in total. For example, this could be morning and afternoon sessions. So five sessions lasting two hours and one session lasting two and a half hours. Do you consider that planning now if you haven't uh, done so already to ensure all students have enough time to complete by the end of the window? And there are two tasks to complete in this assignment. The first is installing part of a cabling system and the second is testing a cabling system. For task one, Students will need to create and install the cabling system and relevant hardware based on the information in the brief. Students don't need to work based on their proposal from assignment one. Students will also produce a supporting document containing annotated photographs and screenshots showing the steps they've taken. This should include preparation too, such as the raw materials, tools needed, and health and safety equipment used. I've included a list of some of the typical resources that will be needed, but always in, do ensure you check the live provider guide for series specific requirements. The cable installation is assessing performance outcome one and performance outcome two. 
with performance outcome one focusing on network security when configuring devices and Wi-Fi. And for performance outcome two, it's their practical skills. So the quality of their work, uh, working safely, uh, the requirements of the scenario are met and the components are labeled. The second task is about devising a test plan and testing the cable system that the students just installed, just as they would do in a real life industry scenario. Uh, like with task one, annotated pictures should be included with this task. An NCFB will provide a test plan document and students should cross-reference their test plan and supporting document where appropriate. So examples of tests are shown, such as connectivity, speed, communication between devices, etc. But one to note is security, as students will always need to make recommendations for improvements. And here's the MARC scheme summary for that task, which like the first task also assesses performance outcomes one and two. For the testing of security controls in performance outcome one, it's important that students use a range of methods and the testing covers the installation and has recommendations too. For performance outcome two, the examiners are also looking for more range, such as the number of tests performed on components and students documentation of these and their use of networking test tools. Now, due to the practical nature of this assignment, practice is going to be key for helping to prepare your students. And I have a few different examples of possible activities. I'll not go through uh, each one, uh, but some examples could include showing pictures with errors and see if students can see it or an actual setup maybe with deliberate mistakes or cabling errors set up for students to spot. Or bringing even a bit of competition between students by having them race to complete cables while maintaining that quality though. Or have a student take on a quality checker role and inspect cable work done by their peers. And depending on the, na depending on the nature of your students, their personality types and so on, uh, that competition element being brought in, you might find some students really examining closely to try and find any fault. Or you could set up a practical activity maybe with some stuff missing or unsuitable equipment and see if students speak up. Uh, this could be missing some um, protective equipment, uh, could be some slightly cracked uh, trunking given to students. I think it's an interesting one actually to test out on students as well and see how many uh, actually let you know about these in advance. Because remember, quality of their work is assessed. The final assignment uh, that we're on to now is about cable and network troubleshooting and performing a risk assessment. So this assignment has three tasks which each occur on their own day. So three days required, and these are set by NCFE. The first task will require students to troubleshoot different faulty cables, and students have an hour and a half for this task. Now, while this task is on a set date, providers can schedule multiple sessions during the day to aid uh, the deliverability of this task. However, though, if you do that, students will need to be supervised until they've all completed. Because this is to reduce the risk of an assessment breach and basically to ensure students who have completed the task don't reveal anything to those who haven't. The second task is on the second day and students will be given a packet tracer file and will have two hours to analyze and troubleshoot a network. And then task three on day three, where students have to perform a network risk assessment in the two hour time limit. 
So in this task, you'll need to check the live provider guide regarding the cable configurations that will need to be prepared in advance. Now, the nature of these faults will vary each year to ensure a range will be addressed over time. Now, students will need to take pictures of what they did and add these to a document with annotations. There will also be a test plan supplied by NCFB for students to complete. Now, this task uh, assesses performance outcomes one and two, but there isn't a fixed set of descriptors to look at for this task because it will actually depend on the fault presented. So it's more of a points based mark scheme where students have either performed an action correctly or they haven't such as wires configured correctly for the cable types, such as straight through cable, fitting the connector correctly, uh, correct crimping, etc. But one aspect that should always be included is a test or confirmation that everything is working as it should be. And then the quality of their test plan is also assessed. With marks awarded, for accurate completion and relevant comments included. So task two is also regarding troubleshooting, but this time it's for a simulated network. And NCFE will provide a packet tracer file for this task. So students will complete uh, the supplied test plan for the network and much like the other tasks, a document with those annotated screenshots. And do remind students that they need to include justifications for any applicable choices or decisions made. And even how they decided to approach the uh, network troubleshooting. So performance outcomes two and three are assessed in this task. And just want to look at performance outcome three first. As basically. This is a brief description produced by the students outlining how they'll analyze, interpret, and solve any issues which arise from the troubleshooting process. For performance outcome two, students will ensure their testing of the packet tracer file is comprehensive, uh, apply troubleshooting skills to fix the issues encountered, and all issues have been identified and resolved. To get the maximum marks, making sure students demonstrate that. And then we have the final task in this assignment, which is a risk assessment of a network based on the information in the brief. The students will complete the NCFE provided risk assessment template, and as well as considering the network in terms of connectivity and accessibility risks, other threats such as fires, floods, break-ins, etc., should be evaluated too. And coupled with assessing the likelihood uh, and impact of a risk occurring. So students should also offer up um, security control measures and mitigations. So both of those, the assessing the likelihood and impact and controls and recommendations. And here's the uh, final thing that students are marked against with performance outcome one focusing, uh, focusing on their identification of a range of risks that are relevant to the brief or scenario presented and making recommendations for those controls, addressing physical, technical and administrative risks and controls. And performance outcome three is about the justifications, explaining why certain aspects are risks with those justifications. And similarly, when discussing the controls to be implemented. Justifications as to why they would be successful. Now, getting students used to different scenarios and contexts will be important uh, so students can make the, the assessment and their evidence relevant always relevant to the scenario. And to save you again a bit work here, there are aspects of some of the other occupational specialisms that can be useful to support your delivery. So while not everything will be applicable, 
It should provide you with some ideas for revision and for supporting your students. And some of the exemplification materials could also be used. For example, I've got the digital infrastructure assignment one pass and distinction uh, exemplars on screen right now. Where the scenario and situation is different, but not some of the categories such as physical, technical and administrative. This can be useful for preparing your students, even getting them to uh, decide, have a look at the past example, maybe decide what's good, what could be improved, then compare it with the distinction. So these extra bits that you could use with your delivery of the network cabling. We hope you found uh, this overview of the network cabling occupational specialism assignments useful and hope it will help you in preparing for the assessments and preparing your students. And from everyone here at NCFA, we'd like to thank you for viewing this training and wish you a successful and enjoyable year.